So a request that I get often and a question that I get asked often is, what is the difference between JEPA models and LCM models? And so if you're familiar with Jan LeCun, he has two competing architectures or, or two architectures that he talks about a lot. JEPA, which is Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture, and LCM, which is Large Context Models. Uh, Jan LeCun, he happens to take the position that uh, LM models are not the way forward, and so he, these two architectures are more of uh, the way forward in his mind and, and uh, what he proposes as an alternative to Transformers architectures overall. These methods uh, are varying like differentiation between transformers is the way that I would simplistically break them down. Like the most simplistic <clears throat> difference that I can give you between an LCM and a, and a JEPA model is that an LCM model is uh, much closer to transformers architecture and uh, is a kind of like a just a reimagining of transformers architecture overall, whereas JEPA is its own thing like outside of transformers and would exist if transformers didn't exist, period. So with that said, let's dive into both of these methods and I'll give you the code for both of them here and an explanation of both of them. So starting off with JEPA or Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture, the concept is that JEPA is a predictive learning framework that avoids explicit generative modeling. Instead of reconstructive raw and reconstructing raw input as in traditional autoencoders or generative models, JEPA learns abstract latent representations that capture the essence of the data. And that's kind of like the bottom line with both of these architectures, right? Is that the autoencoder, tokenization, all of that, like a lot of the like all of the criticism that people put in that arena, Jan LeCun agrees. So he's like, that's not the way forward. That um, we'll never get to AGI with a token predictor. That we need a concept understander. Like, and that's like what both of these architectures are flat out built off of, right? Rather than predicting tokens, they're geared towards understanding concepts. And then so how does JEPA do that? It uses a few different architectural concepts. The first is latent space prediction, which is it predicts missing or future elements in an abstract space rather than pixel perfect reconstruction. So you're never going for a like a photo photo perfect reconstruction. You're going for uh, a good representation. And then so if you know uh, anything about like HTC learning and, and HTC space, it borrows a lot from that and a lot of those concepts where you're utilizing more predictive math as opposed to uh, very linear reconstructions. Second is that it avoids generative pitfalls, unlike VAEs or variable autoencoders or diffusion models which require pixel level accuracy, JEPA learns compact and structured representations that are more generalizable. Again, it's all based off of like uh, prediction where you would in a traditional model put um, linear math. That's kind of like the bottom line of the a lot of this architecture, right? And that's why I find it fascinating. I like it overall and, and I like the predictive map behind it. <laughs> Uh, then you have architectural components, like it uses a predictor module to infer missing parts of the input and a critic to ensure meaningful representation alignment. The critic isn't 100% necessary within the architecture, but it's an enhancement, it's an advancement. It's like back propagation to this architecture. Uh, and then the critic is just essentially going through and, and, and auto-correcting auto the model itself, right? And then so the big applications for JEPA models are uh, very specifically self supervised learning, robotics, and AI systems that need efficient representation learning without excessive computational overhead. Low data, low, low compute, <laughs> and away from uh, transformers, right? LCM models are large context models. And then so the concept of an LCM is LCM is Lacoon's approach to long-term reasoning and planning designed to surpass the limitations of standard transformers. It aims to be a more efficient alternative to autoregressive models, particularly in handling long sequences and causal reasoning. I, I, I'm a fan of Jan LeCun, honestly. So it's essentially his JEPA is, you know, like here's what I would do, period. Like here's what I think is 100% the way forward. Uh, and then LCMs are like, okay, like, uh, if I'm wrong and like transformers are the way it, it's not going to be transformers. It's going to be this. So here's LCM and here's both, right? Uh, and then so LCM models, kind of the key features of them are that they handle longer sequences. So unlike traditional transformers with limited context windows, LCM focuses on processing extensive content well, context while maintaining efficiency. 
It avoids token by token generation. Both of these models are not autoregressive models, right? So LCM does not rely on sequential token generation, but instead considers larger, more structured contexts. Uh, if you've gone through my videos, I talk about this concept kind of in depth where to me, a tokenization is lossy, <laughs> flat out, and there's no way to, to get away from that lossiness. Jan LeCun agrees with that, right? Like Jan LeCun hates tokenization. So any arguments that you make around that, that <clears throat> you're, you're in his camp with that. Um, and then it's again, like the concept being that it's not about tokenization or representations, it's about understanding a concept and, and actually like not memorization of tokens, but understanding and, and actually being able to reason. Um, and then so this, uh, according to Lacoon, leads to more efficient inference designed to reduce computational inefficiency associated with the transformer-based architectures. Uh, and in practice, I mean, the, I'm a huge fan of the LCM models. It's amazing. It's great. One thing within this um, that I, I do like to point out when I do point to uh, LCM models as well is like a concept that uh, Lacoon puts into this that often gets overlooked is a hidden dimension, right? Essentially, like uh, the bottom line is, is that Jan Lacoon bakes in Schrodinger's box and Schrodinger's cat, like that whole experiment into the center of an LCM model <laughs> and just highlighting that because it often gets overlooked and it's super cool. It's the most amazing part and the coolest part of LCM models to me overall. So main difference between JEPA and LCM models are that JEPA predicts missing data in latent space whereas LCM models are uh, large context dependent efficiency. So they're like uh, LCM models are your, they're predicting the data set and they're predicting like the, uh, on the data set. Whereas JEPA models are uh, taking more into consideration, like this full concept of um, we're actually embedding like whatever we're doing in latent space. And so let's just like uh, call it that and, and cut out the middleman. Uh, types of learning is JPA is great for self-supervised and representation focused, uh, whereas LCMs are long range sequence modeling. So again, self-supervised, but it's just uh, different uh, architectures there. Generative, um, like JEPA is uh, not generative, right? So it avoids a direct reconstruction and then LCM um, avoids token by token generation. So it's uh, like half generative. Compute computational efficiency, both are designed for that. And then primary use cases, they're both designed to eliminate transformers. So summary, JPA is about efficient representation learning, avoiding explicit generative reconstructions, whereas LCM is about handling long range dependencies efficiently and bypassing the limitations of transformers architecture itself. So diving into the actual code representation, below here I have a simple Python implementation of a JEPA architecture model using PyTorch. This example captures the core ideas of JEPA. First, it's an encoder to map inputs into latent representations. Then it's a predictor to infer missing parts in latent space. And then it, in this instance, I do put in a critic, which is again, optional in the JEPA architecture, but think of it like back propagation, like you really want it in there uh, to enforce meaningful predictions. And, and I know that like this doesn't use back propagation and Jan Lacoon is not a fan of back propagation. That's just the, the analogy that came to my head to explain that. So. This implementation is a minimal working example, just giving you kind of a, a basis uh, for this JEPA architecture. Um, and then so you can see, we start off like we're using PyTorch, right? So uh, we, we create a, like a, a PyTorch linear neural network and uh, like uh, we define the dimensions just like we would. We define our feed forward and then again, no back propagation. <laughs> you won't see back propagation in these models, right? Um, so you have your, your feed forward uh, mechanism here and then you have your critic. You can consider your critic like back propagation. I mean, ah. I just like I mean that's up to you right but so um, like essentially uh, the critic is is judging the outputs of the model and then making outputs off of that it's not back propagating off of the neurons and the weights themselves it's passing that off like uh, whether or not that's back propagation to you or like you want to consider that like um, a brother of back propagation or a cousin or a distant cousin or twice removed is completely up to you uh, so like going for further then we actually have uh, the JEPA like model it's itself and the architecture. And then so again, it's very straightforward, but you'll notice that there's no decoder, right? So encoder, predictor, and critic. And then that's the architecture of the layers. Um, and then so they're not like uh, just um, transformer layers where it's, uh, you know, just repeating. It's encoder, predictor, and critic. 
Uh, and then you go through and then uh, in the, the like how it trains, right? Is So you're mapping all of this data to latent space, as I said before. Um, and then you uh, like just mask um, certain parts of the latent space representation for the trainings. And that's essentially how the model trains, right? Is you're, uh, you um, give it, you know, here's some of the data set and then the loss rates. I mean, this is amazing. Like this is uh, like by the time it gets down to here, that, that's uh, down to here. Uh, it, it's, uh, so after three epochs, it's near lossless. Um, and then it's, you can see it actually goes up after three epochs. And that's one of these things with these models, right? Like, um, and I, I, with JEPA and both LCM, I have over trained them every single time <laughs> played around these models. And I've given them too much like of a data set, training data set every single time. If you're used to transformers, like the bottom line is, is I mean, these are designed to solve those inefficiencies. And it's Jan LeCun, right? He knows what he's doing. So they work uh, in that instance. And then, so how is this different from a, a regular autoencoder? First of all, a traditional autoencoder reconstructs the raw inputs. So again, it's utilizing pixel perfect images. It's utilizing linear algebra in this instance where Jan LeCun is using, utilizing predictive math. That's like the bottom line behind the scenes, right? JEPA focuses on learning abstract representations and predicting missing information in the latent space. And this approach avoids pixel perfect level, a pixel level generation and fosters a more robust feature learning environment than you would get within traditional architectures. So if you want to go far away from transformers, like you think like transformers is not it at all, JEPA is like a good place to look towards, right? But if you're like, uh, transformers is, I like transformers, but um, I understand that there's transformer squared, transformers two and LCM, right? And then so uh, out of those three, I like LCM. And then so what's LCM compared to LLM? The first of all, an LCM model handles long range dependent Dependencies, whereas an LLM model generates tokens and it's token by token, so it's auto regressive, right? And that auto regressiveness, that token generation and prediction, is specifically what Jan LeCun hates in this instance. So you're processing the entire context at once. You're literally creating a, a, a shape out of the entire data set, which I love. It's very sim like similar to um, HDC in this instance, right? Uh, whereas LLM models, you're predicting tokens. You're translating the and, and the data set into a token representation and then it's actually representing and translating and predicting on the tokens. Architecture LCM models use linear or memory efficient attention, whereas LLM models use full self attention, so quadratic attention. So, um, whereas in like all of the math that I've talked about up until this point, Jan LeCun utilizes predictive math, whereas the uh, uh, LLM models utilize linear algebra, it's the reverse in this instance when it comes to the attention mechanism, right? It's, I mean, a, a lot of fixing of these problems and like, hey, maybe you should just twist this dial here, twist that dial there. Um, and then so with the attention me mechanism, he's like, let's put in some linear math instead of predictive math there and that works out a lot better. Same thing with the um, uh, like the uh, ON, uh, ON versus ON squared equation, right? And then uh, that's kind of like the bottom line is like the uh, LCM model compared to LLM is just slight tweaks and, and um, improvements over the LLM model to the point where essentially you have no back propagation within this model, but you're getting kind of like that same sort of uh, uh, you're getting all of the same features out of backpropagation within it. It does utilize ReLU, as you can see here within the code, but there's no backpropagation. It's all feed forward mechanisms. Um, and then like, it's all based off of feed forward mechanisms, this uh, compute scale, the differentiation for attention and the way that uh, like the uh, hidden layer is kind of a hidden dimension uh, and, and like uh, incorporating the kind of like quantum math in that in, into that the uh, model itself. Um, and like overall that gets you uh, what you see here with an LCM model. And then in, on this example of this LCM model, you can see much higher loss rate that it starts off like, like it'll start off very high. So 8.6 on the loss rate goes down to 4.8, 2.4. Uh, and then again, so like this is a, like when you're comparing LCM models to uh, LLM models, your loss rate is gonna be generally higher on your LCM model. Um, you want to pay more attention to accuracy um, in this instance. And then in this instance, I've, I've run LCM models and tested LCM models compared to LLM models quite a few times. And in general, they end up being um, either as accurate or the LCM model ends up performing much better, uh, but then it also needs like far less data and it computes and trains in a far less amount of time um, overall than the LCM model. So. Uh, overall, I'm a big fan of these architectures. I get asked this question a lot. What's the difference between JEPA and LCM and LLM? So here you go. Here's a, a uh, all of it in one lecture, one notebook. Hopefully this is good content for you. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thanks very much.